The converse is also true. It is not greater than the very smallest fraction of the merit and virtue of the Bodhisattva who first brings forth the body mind. No matter what analogy you use, there is nothing that merit and virtue can be compared to. Bringing forth the body mind is wanting to cultivate many of the particular dharmas. To cultivate the six parameters and the ten thousand conducts is the body mind. No matter what kind of practice it is, if you are able to cultivate it, then it is bringing forth the body mind. If you are not able to cultivate a dharma, it is not bringing forth the body mind. This is like when you mentioned the precept of not touching money. If you are a person with money and you will, and you maintain the precept of not touching money, that's truly doing. That's truly doing it. If you didn't have any money to begin with, and you hold the precept of not touching money, since it is the way you were in the first place, would you still count that as maintaining the precept against touching money? If people have money and don't want it, if they give their money away and do not keep it for themselves, so that their hands do not even touch money, then they are maintaining the precept of not touching money. Now, can people who have no money be called those who maintain the precept of not touching money? Yes, they can. However, they are already without money, so there is no need to mention it. The body mind is just cultivating. You know a little, so you cultivate a little. You know two parts, so you cultivate two parts. You cultivate however much you know. That is the body mind. Right now at Gold Mountain, there are some people who are not following the rules of proper behavior. Therefore, I am going to explain this for you. All lay people should place their palms together. When they speak with left home pupil, whether or not they are addressing their teacher, lay pupil should have reverence for pupil who have left the home life. Nor can you slander pupil who have left home, left the home life by calling them demons. If you have this kind of behavior, you should quickly change. You shouldn't come to Gold Mountain Monastery if you do not change. You lay pupil. Have your own position. Although you don't praise the triple jewel, you certainly can't slander the triple jewel. To go as far as to slander the triple jewel by calling them demons is certainly impermissible. Everyone must honor the rules of proper behavior. If you do not act responsibly and do not uphold the precepts, or perhaps intentionally act. In an improper style, so as to seduce people who have left the home life, that is certainly impermissible. Whoever has this fault should quickly change. If you do not change, then you are not permitted to come to Goat Mountain Monastery. Return the light and look within, and see if you uphold the moral precepts. If Your name, your name is brought out in public. It is likely that you will not have the opportunity to come to Gold Mountain Monastery anymore. You came here to learn the Buddha Dharma. You didn't come here to learn to be jealous and obstructive. But it seems that if you are not jealous of this, then you are jealous of that. These kinds of people are not allowed at Gold Mountain Monastery. But We must definitely be welcome in the house. If you want to fall into the house, then continue these actions, and in the near future, you will have your chance. Sutra, disciple of the Buddha, putting this analogy aside, suppose there is a second person who, within a single thought, is able to do what the person before him did, as well as the acts of making offerings. Which all the living beings in countless world systems performed throughout the countless compass, in thought after thought like this, he uses the limitless kinds of articles of offerings to make offerings throughout the limitless compass to limitless Buddhas, such commands as well as to all of the living beings in limitless world systems. Commentary: Dharma Wisdom Bodhisattva says, disciple of the Buddha. Let us lay aside the previous analogy and not speak about it anymore. 
putting this analogy aside, we will speak another analogy. Basically, there isn't such a person, but let us hypothetically suppose there is a second person before there was a first person who became resolved on making offering. Now, suppose here is the second person who within a single thought is able to do what the person before him did as well as the acts of making offerings which all the living beings in countless world systems performed throughout the countless compass. In one thought, he is able to perform these many acts of making offerings. He thought after thought like this. In one thought, he is like this. And in thought after thought, he is also like this. He uses limitless kinds of articles of offerings to make offerings throughout the limitless compass to limitless Buddhas, thus come ones. He uses them in making offerings to the Buddhas who are so many that they are without measure as well as to all of the living beings in limitless world systems. Throughout the limitless compass, he makes offerings to living beings who are so many that they are without measure. In world systems which are so many that they are also without measure, and he does so passing through great compass which are also without measure. <coughs> 